Today's video is sponsored by my latest course, the Unreal Engine C++ Survival Game course. If you're interested in trying the course, the link is in the description, and it is basically the culmination of the past three years of experience working professionally on multiple games that have been released on Steam and, and whatnot that are made with Unreal Engine. So basically in the course we go through and we make a fully fledged survival game from scratch in C++. I show you how to do everything, installing the tools, building all of the systems that we're going to build, and basically hold your hand through the whole process. So today we're going to be making the inventory system from the course. We're going to be making a more basic version of that inventory system, so it's a bit more scaled down, but it's technically the same thing, it's just not network. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so to get started, you're going to want to download the inventory system template project in the description and there will not be a Visual Studio solution. So make sure you're using Unreal Engine version 4.23. You can check uh, here. And then what you want to do is you want to just generate Visual Studio project files. And then we're going to open the solution up. Finally, you want to right click on Inventory System and make sure that it is set as the startup project. And then we're going to open the editor by clicking on Local Windows Debugger. Okay, so here's the system we're going to be building today. So when you press tab, you can see that it'll pop up with your items. This is driven by C++. You can see in the corner, it says your health is 100. When I eat the bread, it's going to give me some health. Um, and then there are some other types of items, like these equipable items. So I've got a vest and a helmet, and you can just put them up right from the inventory. So let's talk about what sort of inventory system we're trying to build today. A lot of inventory systems are not dynamic enough. So they have like three types of items, right? They've got like food items, they've got like equipable items. And if you want to add like new items, the system starts to get really complicated and it sort of starts to fall over, right? So how do we do a system that is dynamic? That's the first thing that we're trying to solve. The second thing is bad performance. This inventory system here is super, super, super lightweight. Like it uses something called new objects, which are like, the most basic uh, class you can have in Unreal Engine. So very, very lightweight. And the last thing is we want it to be easy for designers to use. So in a lot of inventory systems, you know, it's like C++ backends and stuff like that, and it's not very accessible. In this system, the way we're building these items is they're like tiny little nuggets of logic. So if I open up the vest, it's just a little bit of blueprint logic, and it'll toggle between equipping the vest and taking the vest off and we do the same for the helmet as well so that's how we're designing an inventory system that it has like this on use event and you just do whatever you want when you, the items are used it's very very straightforward but the item system also supports c++ functionality as well so if you wanted to do something in c++ when you use the item we also support that as well as having blueprint side logic so you just have options when it comes to that sort of thing Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create something called an inventory component. So we're going to go new C++ class. We're going to go show all classes and add an actor component. And we'll call it inventory component. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, why are we making this a component? The reason we're making this a component is because if you want to expand the system further, the great thing about components is anyone can have a component. So we're going to add a inventory component. I'm going to put it in a folder called items as well just for organization purposes. And so you can think of the inventory component as kind of the manager of a collection of items, right? So we put items into the inventory, we can take them out of the inventory, but the inventory component is kind of the manager of that whole system. And then we need to make our items. Now items are actually just predominantly like data. So you can use an item and we need to do stuff when you use the item, of course. But if you think about it, like there's so much data associated with an item, You've got um, the name of the item, the thumbnail for the item, a description for the item, you know, lots of different information. So object is great. And we're going to make, it's it's mostly just a data class. You'll see in a second. So we're going to put this in our items folder as well. And I'm going to call this item. So this will be the base class for all of the items in your game. And then you can make children from this class. So you can make like food items, equipable items, all that sort of thing. But we're going to start off with this item class here. So the first thing I'm going to do is confuse everyone by adding a whole bunch of crazy keywords to the U class. Ah oh man, I don't know if I can really be bothered explaining all this. You might have to do some googling because otherwise this video is going to go on forever. Um, but abstract, 
don't allow us to directly create uh, classes, instances of this class. Blueprint type, this exists in blueprints, blueprintable, we can create blueprints out of this. Edit inline new. I don't want to explain these two because they're, they're kind of confusing. Um, let's, let's skip over this. If you're super interested in what these uh, keywords mean, then I would encourage you to look these up or I think you can right click and go to definition and then there's there's some descriptions here of what they do as well. Uh, but with all that nonsense out of the way, we're going to add a constructor to our item. And now we need to add a whole bunch of data. So I told you that like items are just these big data classes that have a bunch of information in them. Well, I'm adding a bunch of information. So you'll want to copy what I have here. I'm just copying and pasting so I can spend more time sort of explaining what all this does. Uh, so we have some text. Uh, this might be equip or eat. It sort of explains like how you use the item and we're going to use this for the tooltip. So when you hover over the item, it might say eat item, it might say equip item, you know, whatever. Uh, the pickup mesh, uh, we're not using this in this video, but um, if you want to do pickups, you, you want to store the pickup mesh in here. Uh, the thumbnail for the item, this is going to show up in the inventory. The display name for the item, this is going to show up in the inventory as well. The description of the item is going to show up in the inventory as well. And I've just added this multi-line option, which allows you to um, create new lines in the editor. And then we have the weight of the item. Uh, I'm not going to be using any weight stuff in this video, but you might want this in case you want to have a weight limit on your inventory. And then I just have the, uh, the weight clamped to zero. So you can't have an item that weighs less than zero because that doesn't really make sense. The next thing that we're going to add is the inventory that actually owns the item. So items are usually going to exist inside of an inventory component. So we're just going to have a reference to the inventory component. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make this um, on use function. And you'll see here that I've added this really disgusting looking syntax that says pure virtual. This is a C++ thing. This is how you define pure virtual functions in C++. I know that looks really gross, but that's how you do it. Um, and that's because you should never call use on an item. You should always call use on a child of an item. It, because this is an abstract class, it doesn't make sense to call use on this. So we have the pure virtual thing. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a blueprint version of the use function. So when the item gets used, we can do something in C++, but we can also do stuff in blueprints using a blueprint implementable event. So we're going to add that as well. And let's add our first custom item. So we're going to right click on item and create a C++ class derived from item. And we're going to say this is a food item. So the food item is going to heal the player when you eat it. So if we go into our new food item class, let's make a food item that actually heals the player when you consume it. So we'll say protected virtual void use. And then we're going to put override in here. So basically what we're saying is what do you want to do when you use a food item, right? Because a food item is going to be different from an equipable item, which is going to be different from a weapon item. So like what is the functionality that we want to make? And in our case, I thought we'd just heal the player. So what we're going to do is I'll add a float value here called health. And we're going to make this a edit anywhere. Uh, I cannot type today. Blueprint read only category equals health. Sorry about my incredibly clicky mechanical keyboard. And then what we're going to do is we're going to initialize health to be say a hundred. And so what we're going to do is when you eat a food item, we're just going to, uh, we're going to grab the character and we're going to say, give the character some health. So just give the character maybe 10 health. And actually what you could do, this is kind of cool as well. You could say that each item has a set amount of health that it heals. So I'm going to copy weight. I'm going to put it in my food item here. And we might make this public. I'm just going to say health to heal. So like how much health does this specific food item heal? And then when you use the item, we're going to say the character's health is increased by health to heal. And we also need to include the header file. And there you go. So in this particular item's case, the food item, we're going to take your character and then we're going to give them some health. So that's kind of 
that's how the system works, right? You you create a child of the item class and then you implement the use function and then you do whatever you want in the use function. And then um, of course we also have the on use, which is like the blueprint version. So if you wanted to do like spawning particles and stuff like that, which is way easier to do in blueprints, um, you would do it inside of this function here. Next up, we're gonna click on the uitem constructor. We're going to create an implementation for it and we'll just fill out some of the default values. So I'm just gonna say that by default an item weighs one kg, I guess it would be. Um, just give it a default name and a default use action text and then you can uh, customize this in the editor. Next up underneath my health variable, I'm just gonna add a function that uses any given item. So what we'll do is we'll implement that function and this is a really straightforward function, right? It takes an item and then it just uses the item and it also calls the blueprint version. Uh, you will need to type this as well. And just so I don't get confused later on, I'm just gonna say BP event, just to remind myself that that one is the blueprint version. And then we will include the header file. And there we go. So the thing about this system right now is our character actually doesn't have an inventory because we haven't given our character an inventory component. So to give our character an inventory component, we're gonna just copy the follow camera, except we're just gonna change it to say inventory component. And I'll just call this inventory. And we're gonna say edit defaults only so that inside of the editor, you can actually change this. We'll do edit anywhere actually, that works as well. And we'll just say inventory. Then in the constructor, we're just going to initialize our inventory using create default subobject, and we're going to say that our inventory's capacity by default is 20. Don't worry, we haven't made the capacity thing yet. I'm going to add that in a second. And once again, we have to add our lovely header file. And I think I put it in the items folder. So, so far we've made kind of like a simple like data class called item and it has some information and we can use items and stuff like that. But the inventory component is the core of like how all this comes together. So the inventory component is really crucial. So let's finish the inventory component and then we just do a little bit of UI and then the whole system will come together really quick. So we're gonna add a delegate. If you don't know what a delegate is, it is, um, it's, it's like you can listen to a delegate and then when the delegate's called, you can do some stuff. We are using this because in Blueprints, we want to update the UI when your inventory updates. So like if you use one of your items and it gets consumed, we need to update the UI so that it no longer shows that item. So that's basically what that does. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my inventory component to look like this. So we're going to have four variables and we're going to have uh, two functions. So it's actually quite straightforward. So um, we've got an add item function that will give the player an item. We have remove item, which will take an item away from the player. Uh, the default items is kind of like items that you start the game with. So when we start the game, you'll get these items by default. The capacity is how many items you can carry. This is our delegate that we just made up here. And then the array of items is the items that you have in your inventory currently. So let's go ahead and start filling in some of this logic. We're gonna create an implementation of the add item function and we're going to do it for remove item as well. I am using visual assist by the way that's how I can uh, create implementation but if you're not using visual assist you can click the light bulb and then create definition and that will work as well. Okay so by default we're going to say that an inventory component has a capacity of 20. We're going to say that on begin play loop over all of the default items and then give the player those items. So how do we give the player an item? Well, it's actually really straightforward. We just do items.addItem, but there is some other stuff that we need to do. So we need to tell the UI to update because if we get given an item, we need the UI to show that item that we got. So call the delegate. Um, we also need to tell the item what world it's in and the um, owning inventory. And let's add the header file as well. So include item.h and also inside of item.h under the constructor I'm just going to add one more variable here this is world and the reason we're doing this is because the item needs to know what world we're in because I want items to be able to like spawn particles and stuff like that and if you don't have the world 
then it's just not possible to do that. While we're at it, I'm also going to override virtual new world get world const and just return the world. So um, if you remember, I added the capacity to the inventory. So we want to enforce the capacity. So if we try to give the player an item, but you are over your capacity, then we're not going to allow the item to be added. And we're also not going to allow the item to be added if the item is null. And finally, we're going to return true because the item was successfully added. So these are bool functions just because I think it's nice to know whether or not the item was successfully added. And removing an item is pretty much the exact opposite. So you'll want to copy what I have here. Basically, null out the items owning inventory and world, remove it from the items, tell the inventory UI that it needs to update, return true, otherwise return false. If you have a tick component, by the way, get rid of that. We do not need this uh, inventory component to tick. In fact, that would be bad for performance reasons. So you can just get rid of it. So with all that done, I'm just going to click on the local Windows debugger and then we can jump into the editor and we'll make the UI and then the whole system should pretty much be done. Okay, so let's make some items. I'm going to go to blueprints, blueprint class. I'm going to search for item and we're going to make some items. So we'll start off by making a food item to test out and see if that actually works. So BP underscore item, we'll call it BP underscore food underscore bread. And we're going to right click again. We'll make another blueprint. I'm going to search for item. And we'll call this item uh, clothing, vest. And then we're going to duplicate the vest and we're going to make one called clothing helmet. And so open these up. And you'll notice that this is pretty much just all like data. We're just filling out all of the data that should go inside of these items. So for example, the helmet, its name's going to be helmet. I'm going to say this is a solid helmet. The thumbnail, search for helmet and click on the helmet thumbnail. And for the use action text, I'm going to say equip. So it's going to say click on the helmet to equip or something like that. Then we're going to do the vest. So I'm going to say equip again. We're going to say vest this is a bulletproof vest we're going to give it the vest thumbnail and finally the bread so we're going to go for the bread thumbnail we're going to say eat bread some delicious bread cool Okay, so we have a few items in the game now so let's actually give them to our character and use them and to do that we're going to have to do the ui so to start off, we're going to start with our inventory item widget. I have already designed all of this just to save you guys some time, but I haven't done any of the scripting. So we're going to do that now. So let's go to the graph. I'm going to add a variable, call it item. So each inventory item uh, widget is going to need an item. So like, what is the item that we're showing? And we're going to make this expose on spawn and instance editable and click on compile, save. And let's actually script this as well while we're at it. So what we want to do is when the item is constructed, we are going to take the thumbnail, which is this guy here. We're going to set the thumbnail to be the item. And then we're going to get the thumbnail from the item and then just plug that in. Then we're going to take the item name text and set the text to show the items display name and we can get the items display name by taking the item getting item display name and then just plugging that in like so finally when you click on the item we want to use the item and the way that we do that is we're going to click on the use button add an on clicked event get the owning player pawn cast it to our player and then use item and the item that we want to use is whatever item this piece of UI is representing. Finally when you hover over the item I want it to say click to equip helmet or click to eat bread or whatever so we're going to add a thumbnail as well so click on the use button go down to the tooltip text and bind click on create binding 
and then we'll rename this new function to get tooltip and this is just going to do the following so we're going to add a format text go ahead and type it out like i've typed out here and then you'll get these pins here and all you need to do is get the item get the action text get the item display name and get the description Finally, we're going to do the inventory. So how do we get the inventory to actually show the items in this box and use our inventory component to display them? So we're going to go into that now. So I'll make an event here called initialize inventory. We're going to add an event construct as well. And then I'll just make one more custom event called refresh inventory so if you um, drop an item or you get a new item or something we want to refresh the inventory so that you can see that item uh, so let's go ahead and uh, do this logic really quick so we want to start by getting our player because we need to get our inventory component from our player so we're going to grab the player we're going to grab our player's inventory uh, we'll store it in a variable as well we'll just call that inventory And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag off the inventory and bind to on inventory updated. So this is that delegate that I was talking about. And so this way when our inventory updates, we're going to be able to refresh our inventory. And so go ahead and plug that in like that. And then lastly, we're going to initialize our inventory or initialize the UI. So it actually shows what's in our inventory. Uh, initialize inventory is going to take a, well, yeah, let's let's allow it to take an inventory component. So we'll say inventory. So refresh inventory is just going to say initialize inventory and it's just going to give it the inventory that we already have saved. And then what we're going to do down here is we're going to take our inventory box and we're going to clear it because we may be refreshing the inventory. So we want to remove what was in there previously. We then want to get all of the items that were in whatever inventory component was passed into this event. So loop over all of the items. Then we want to create a widget, which for some reason does not want to come up, but there it is there, create widget. So plug it in. For the class, you're going to click on inventory item. Plug the array element into the item and then plug get owning player into the owning player. And then finally, we've created the inventory item widget. We're just gonna add it to the inventory box. So add child to wrap box. And just to be specific, this here is the wrap box that it's gonna be added to, this inventory box here. Finally, if you wanna close the inventory, um, we're just gonna click on this button. We're gonna say on clicked. We want to remove the UI from the screen. We're going to get your player. We're going to hide the mouse cursor. And we're going to set the input mode to be game only because we're now closing the UI. So now we just have to add the UI to the screen and then we can actually try this whole system out that we've just made. So in most games, you press the tab key to open your inventory. So I'm just going to type tab and I'm going to add a event for when you press tab and then I'm going to create the inventory. I'm going to get the player controller and plug that into the owning player. I'm then going to add to the viewport. I'm going to get the player controller and say that I want to show the mouse cursor so that we can click on stuff. And I'm also going to set the input mode to be UI only. Just plug the UI that we created into there. So I know that's not like the most professional way to create UI, but I'm just doing this for example's sake. 
And then finally, um, let's go ahead and print out how much health we have so that when we uh, consume the bread, it actually shows you uh, your health increasing. So we're going to print text. We're going to format the text. You have health left. You have health, health left. Okay. And then we're going to get the health and just plug that in like that. So let's compile and save. Now in the system we don't have pickups, so we have to just add the items by adding them to our default items. So click on your inventory, go to default items, and we're going to add some items here. We're using the instanced keyword, which allows us to create new items directly in the editor like this. So we're going to add a helmet, we're going to add a vest, and we're going to give the character some bread as well. Compile and save. And one thing I forgot, by the way, is for the print text node, click the drop down and then set the duration to be zero. I'm also going to delete my character from the level because the instance keyword can sometimes be a little bit buggy. So if we spawn a new character in, we know it's going to work. So if I hit tab, uh, it didn't work, damn it. <laughs> and the reason it didn't work is because in the inventory widget, I actually forgot to hook this up. So you just plug the inventory into the inventory. One more thing guys, I'm actually going to remove pure virtual because I want to be able to subclass this directly if, if need be. So we're just going to create an implementation for use and I'm going to get rid of that pure virtual thing that I had earlier. And so yeah, let's run the debugger and make sure you saved all the UI stuff we did before you uh, make that change by the way. But that just means we can subclass item which you, you shouldn't usually do but it's just going to make testing easier so I can show you guys the whole system. So if I play in the editor, you can see that everything looks fine, but it doesn't do anything, um, except for maybe the health. Actually, the health doesn't work. So if I open up the bread, the bread wants to know health to heal, but I have it set to zero. So let's say it's like 20. And now when I consume my bread, Cool, so you can see that the bread actually gives us health. Um, you will want the bread to be destroyed, and I'll show you how to consume items in a second. Uh, but let's get this equipment working as well. So I'm going to go into my player. And we're not building a equipable item system. I'm just going to show you really quickly, like, this is how the items work. This is not intended to be a clothing system, so just fair warning. But we're going to add a couple of skeletal meshes here. I'm going to call one of them Vest Mesh. I'm going to hit Control w and create one called helmet mesh and then in the construction script I'm going to say helmet mesh set master pose component mesh I'm going to plug the vest in as well and then just plug that up like so hit compile and save okay so let me show you how stupendously easy this is to use now that we've like started to configure the system a little bit more if you open up the clothing vest you can go down to override on use and override the on use function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to equip the vest. And this is so easy to do. So we're going to cast away player. And I want it so that um, if I click the vest again, it removes the vest. So I'm going to use something called a flip flop here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the vest mesh. And we're going to set skeletal mesh to be the vest. And then for this one, we're going to click none. And connect that up like so. Okay. By the way, guys, I screwed up. You actually want to drag vest mesh onto the mesh. So it should be parented to the mesh. And make sure that the location and the rotation and everything is all set to zero. That is very important, otherwise your mesh will appear floating in midair, so don't do that. At this point, if we click on vest, you can see that it equips my vest and everything works. And then if I click it again, it's going to take the vest off. And we can do the same for the helmet, it's literally a copy paste of what we just did for the vest. So I'm literally just going to copy and paste this. We're going to go into the helmet, open full blueprint editor, override the on use. And you're just going to plug this in like so. Except this time we're going to grab the helmet and we're going to plug this in and we're going to say helmet and now we have a working helmet item as well. 
check it out and you can eat the uh, bread i'll show you how to consume bread as well so that once you eat the bread it actually leaves the inventory so inside a food item what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say that if we have an owning inventory then just remove the item from the inventory so uh this and you remember that a remove item function actually refreshes the ui as well which is perfect so um, we also need to do this inventory component.h okay so we'll go back into the editor and i'll show you that this actually now consumes the bread as well as just healing you okay so if i open up the editor and i use my bread now it actually removes the bread from our inventory and it heals us gives us 20 health and so on okay so the main bit of power in this inventory system is that like it's so dynamic like any item can do anything you want because you can attach a little bit of blueprint logic to any item and it's just going to work like say i want my uh helmet to spawn some particles when you put it on i literally pull out spawn a meter at location let's make an explosion happen we're gonna spawn the particles where my character is plug that in and now when i equip my helmet you can see it does an explosion and like that's the power it's like any item can do anything you want um so many inventory systems are like tied to these item categories like this category item does this in this system you can just do whatever the hell you want and you can do it in c++ or blueprints and it's super performant because all we're handling is objects which are like super super lightweight so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this system we make a networked version of it in the unreal survival course we have um, item quantities item pickups plenty of other features so this system is only single player but the one we build is an online version of it um, so if you're interested in that the course link is in the description thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video